This evening we're studying the gospel of peace and understanding how through Christ we can be at peace with God. It is critical that we understand that apart from being reconciled to God through Christ, we stand in a state of enmity between us and and the Almighty. In other words, an enemy of God. Now, you can be on earth without God and remain an enemy of His through the evil, the, the, the way our mind works apart from Him is evil. Mm-hmm. We're perpetually sinning. Yes. In those days, you can probably remember, there was sin without restraint and with no consideration of consequence either for you or for anybody else. Mm-hmm. Right? That was the state in which we stood in, in the Edemic nature. Mm-hmm. We just were sinners, as yes. the Bible says. Someone who perpetually sins. Now, sins, the word sin simply means lawlessness. So we were in a state of lawlessness, right? But Jesus came preaching the gospel of peace. And the first things first is you must understand before you can receive any peace in your heart, you must be at peace with God. And that's the reason Christ came. He came to reconcile the unbelieving, separate humans to himself through Christ. Now, in Hebrews chapter 9, verse 26, I I want you to hear this passage because it shows that it was absolutely necessary for Christ and no one else to suffer and die and to shed his blood. And you, you might ask, why couldn't it be someone else? Well, Christ was sinless. And he, and he came from heaven. His father is God. And so he, would, he came to earth through a virgin birth. He was born under the law. And he came forth at the perfect time, at the end of the ages. His intent was to save mankind from the wrath of God. Amen. With me so far. Now we're talking about the gospel of peace here tonight. So in Hebrews chapter 9, verse 26, it says, He then would have had to suffer often since the foundation of the world, but now, once at the end of the ages, there's there's that point, in other words, that truth right there points to where we are in God's prophetic calendar. We're living in what the Bible describes as the end of the ages. It says, comma, He has appeared... Listen closely. He has appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. Sin is lawlessness. So Christ was, it says he has appeared to put away sin or lawlessness by the sacrifice of himself. Listen to verse 27. Famous passage. People might ask you, why do I have to die? Why must I go to the grave? Why am I going to sleep in a coffin someday? Well, you can take them to Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27, and read the truth to them. Here it is in 27, Hebrews 9, 27. And as it is appointed for men to die once, but after this judgment. So Christ was offered once. That once is where? On Calvary. Okay? Christ was offered once to bear the sins of many. Here it says, to those who eagerly wait for him, he will appear a second time apart from sin for salvation. The word salvation means to be rescued. To be rescued. And so, you might ask, and anyone could, and and rightly so, rescued from what? Rescued from the wrath of God. Amen. We're talking about the gospel of peace here. I don't want to lose you, but I'm showing you how God brought this about. How did He come to the place to where He could offer good news to humans? Well, Christ is the bearer. 
Christ and his obedience brought all things together so that he himself would pay what was required for us to be at peace with God, for us to be reconciled to God. With me so far? Amen. Now turn to St. John 3.36. We'll get to 2 Corinthians 5.17. I haven't forgotten about it. I'll start at verse 34. St. John chapter 3, verse 34. It says, For he whom God has sent speaks the word, words of God. For God does not give the Spirit by measure. The Father loves the Son and has given all things into his hand. Verse 36. He who believes in the Son, say that with me, has everlasting life. And he who does not believe the Son, capital S, shall not see life, but the wrath of God abides on him. So to be separate, to stand in the, in the sin of unbelief, means the wrath of God is abiding on, on that individual. Do you understand? So Christ was sent to save us, deliver us, and I'll go back to the word salvation, to rescue us from the penalty of our sins, which is death. Okay? And when the, the consequence of, of sins goes full circle, at the end, the person who does not believe Christ, does not accept the truth of the gospel, basically calls God a liar through unbelief, will unfortunately pay for his own sin in the lake of fire. So Christ came to rescue us from the wrath of God. And as a consequence, in verse 36a, it says, He who believes in the Son has, present tense, Everlasting life, catch that, has everlasting life. Now turn over to 524, St. John 5 and 24, so that you can see. How the crossover happens. So here in verse 24, it says, Most assuredly, St. John 524, most assuredly I say to you, he who hears my word and believes in him who sent me has everlasting life and shall not come into judgment. Catch that? Shall not come into judgment, but has, look real close, but has passed from death into life. There it is. So I've shown you the, the consequence of Christ's obedience to his Father. We are the beneficiaries. And the consequence is that someone who was on earth without God, without hope, an enemy in, in all technicality to God has been relieved of the wrath of God as a result of our committing sin. Our lawlessness Christ paid what the law required. The law required that there be death. Let that sit on you just a minute. Jesus died to save sinners. Yes. So Jesus died to save a community of people who are lawless. To help you understand a little better. Jesus died to save those that were lawless unto him had no regard for him, no regard for his commands, no regard for the consequence thereof. So we're talking about the gospel of peace. Jesus came preaching, repent and believe. Repent, mean have a change of mind, have a change of heart, 
Have a change of direction. Have a change of attitude. Have a change of posture toward God. And stop acting like you don't understand. This is so critical. Because people, once they, they feel that they don't want to do it, they act, oh, I didn't know that. And all the time, they've known. And they just choose to rebel in their rebellion. It's dangerous. Yes. That is so dangerous because what happens is self-deception rolls in. Yes. And because they refuse to believe the truth, Romans 1 says, and I don't know exactly who that is specifically. I have thoughts, but I won't say. When, when we fail to believe truth, God could and maybe has some given that person over to a reprobate mind. And the definition of a reprobate mind is, is, is that you're no longer able to believe truth. No longer able. It's sharp, isn't it? It's real sharp. But God is... You know, I always tell people lovingly, you're not dealing with a human. And he is not a respecter of men. I don't care who you are. Amen. You can be the leader of the world's most powerful nation or, the, or uh, a leper in India. God treats each person the same, justly. Amen. There's no difference before him. So, when you go back to Hebrews... Here's what I want you to catch. In Hebrews chapter 10, verse 14. I want to talk to you about this process of sanctification. In other words, there's the, we all have struggles in life, right? right? Our struggles are sometimes uniquely different from one to another. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we struggle with our health. Sometimes we struggle in finance. Sometimes we, we struggle relationally. Sometimes we struggle learning. Sometimes we, we, we struggle with many, 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 a, a whole list of things that are too, too many to name in this life. Would you agree? Yeah. Amen. Would, you, would you agree that no one is exempt from that? Yes, yes. we all have our struggles, correct? Yes. 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 So there's a universal struggle going on. And then there's the struggle that God teaches about in Ephesians chapter 6. And what I want to point out to you is apart from Christ, you do not have access to the full armor of God. So it is wise for us to appreciate that Jesus himself has provided and is the full armor of God. Because I don't care where you, how, what theological seminary, sem, seminary you went to and how much you can quote Scripture, if you're not in submission to the Lord Jesus Christ personally and wholeheartedly, it is vain. Yes. It is absolute vanity. So, with that said, there is a sanctification process that happens to the believer. So we, we hear the gospel and believe the gift of God. God gave you a measure of faith to believe, right? How can you, uh, how you, we can't see him, but we believe in him, right? Is that not an expression of faith? Yes, it is. So what, what I'm trying to say is that from the moment that you heard the gospel of, of peace and believed, there is a, a drawing that God works through the Holy Spirit. There's a guiding that God works through the Holy Spirit. There's teaching that God works through the Holy Spirit. There's a setting apart that God works through the Holy Spirit. He also does it by His Word. 
So we have the Holy Spirit who authored the Scripture. We have the Holy Spirit who is our teacher. Thank you, Jesus. And we have the, the precious Word which guides us practically. And the Holy Spirit Himself brings all things to our remembrance that God has spoken, yeah. as we have need of it. Yeah. But it is our privilege to put the Word in our hearts so that the Holy Spirit Himself can bring it to our remembrance. Yeah. Right? Yes, He can do it without that, but He has taught us that we can be transformed, and the sanctification process has started the moment you said, yes, I believe that Jesus is Lord, Yes, I believe that he died on Calvary's cross. Yes, I believe that he was raised from the dead. And I do confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. And I won't stop with that one profession. I won't stop with that one confession. I will declare that Jesus Christ is Lord until I take my last breath. Can you be saved with one time? Yes, Jesus is Lord. Yes. Yes, you can. Yes. Is that the desire of God? No, it's not. And so the, the, the sanctification process began when you heard the gospel and believed. There was a birth by the Spirit. Yes. And so the reconciliation of taking a person on earth without God, without hope, and paying the sin debt through Christ's blood on Calvary's cross and the Father accepting your profession that Jesus is Lord. And yes, He was crucified. And yes, He was buried. And yes, on the third day, with my whole heart, I believe that, Father, You raised Him from the dead. Yes, amen. Yes. Is that not the gospel of Jesus Christ? And does not God accept that profession of faith? And does not God allow the value of the blood of Christ to come to you and to pay your sin debt in full and reckon you before a holy God? Yes, He does. Yes, and the consequence thereof is you become reconciled because of birth by the Spirit and the seed of God. Amen. No longer born just of a, an endemic nature, or rather your, father, your father's seed. Yes, that happened. And yes, praise God, that was God permitting this, that you could be created on earth. But when you come to Christ, God's seed is deposited in you, and you become a new creation. Amen. This new Amen. creation yes. in Christ is by faith. And your profession of belief in the gospel God says, I'm going to credit that profession and belief as righteousness. And now you're going to be able to receive the gift of righteousness as it is written in Romans 5.17. That gift makes you right with God and crushes the enmity between you and God. Why? Because God has nothing to remember anymore. Amen. There's nothing glaring red before him. Amen. Why? Because when Christ paid your sin debt, it was cast as far as the east is from the west, yes. and the Father has no remembrance of it. Amen. You stop and let that sit on you just a minute. That means all sins prior to that day cleansed, paid, and according to the scripture, Thank you, Lord. those have been forgiven. And they're no longer before the throne. So the consequence is the gospel, the good news of peace is because of Christ making peace with God for us. Yes. And us benefiting from it. Amen. His righteous life because he lived and walked and was tempted in every way like any human God ha has declared in his word that he did it without sin 
the sinless Christ has, has paid what was just and due before the throne of God on our behalf. Therefore, we stand in the righteousness of Christ. Amen. We stand in the gift of righteousness. God has declared that your profession of faith, that your, that your belief in the resurrection is, is been accepted. And once that belief is there, the value of the blood of Christ comes rushing down on your, on your crimson sin. And it, it is washed in the blood of Christ. It is cleansed because of the acceptance of the Father of the Son's blood, not because of your righteousness. Salvation, the rescue, is by grace through faith. And thus, we stand at peace with God because of the gospel of peace coming to us via the obedience of Jesus Christ. You see the underpinnings? It's It's one thing to say, Oh, the gospel of peace. But that's just a few words unless you understand how it happened. And so, what is this this, this feet fitted with the readiness of the gospel of peace? Is that you would walk. Feet cause you to walk. Feet fitted with thanksgiving. Feet fitted with gratitude. Feet fitted with humility, knowing that you had no way to reconcile yourself to God. You had no way to escape the wrath of God because St. John 3.36 says that unless you believe in the Son, he who has the Son has life. But he who does not have the Son does not have life, and the wrath of God abideth on him. And once you come to the state where you realize that you could not escape the wrath of God apart from the rescue of Jesus Christ, you become a worshiper through understanding. Amen. It's the understanding that brings you to your knees. It's, it's appreciation and understanding that no one in heaven or on earth could have done that for you. Amen. And that way, when Jesus says, I am the way, I am the life, and no one can come to the Father except through me, He says it rightly. He says it justly. Because God is not willing to accept any other payment for human sin. It's Christ's stop. His blood was the only sacrifice the Father would ever accept. There's a finality Mm. in it. Even Jesus said, it is finished. It is finished. The way of salvation. The bringing forth of the gospel of peace. So what is our duty? When we study this, this, this gospel of peace, well, you have to understand that there's a new and living way that we must walk. At one time you were under the law. But Romans chapter 10 says that Christ is the end of the law to all who believe. believe. So this ushered in a new and living way in which we must worship. Now I'd like to, I'd like to uh, read it to you from Hebrews chapter 10, verse 19. Well, <clears throat> I, let me go back to 14 because it's all, it's all inter, interconnected. Are you with me? In Hebrews chapter 10, please turn your Bibles there. Let's take a, a look. Um, Oh boy, this is so rich. I'll start at 14. I I could back up to 8, but it'll take a lot of time. In 14, for by one offering he is perfected forever. Perfected. Let me say that again. Perfected. Forever. Those who are being sanctified. That means to be set apart by God, to be set apart for God, and to be set apart for the exclusive use by God. And it began the moment you heard the gospel and believed. Amen. The rescue happened. The plucking up 
from the kingdom of darkness, the, the washing of your crimson sin, Amen. the birth by the Spirit and the seed of God entering you. The sanctification process through the Holy Spirit drawing you closer and closer. The teaching of the Word cutting that old way of life out of your heart and out of your tongue and out of your mind and off of your life. Mm -hmm. Change the, the, the trajectory in which you, at one time, we were set on a course that would lead ultimately to the second death. But through the rescue of Christ, the trajectory has changed. Now you're called to service on earth. Now you're equipped with the, and have access to the armor of God. Now your understanding of why you worship God through Christ is full. And, and let me tell you something. If you heard me tonight and it was like honey going in your ears, then the Holy Spirit has taught that to you. Because that understanding has to be heaven down. Mm -hmm. Amen. The revelation of that truth about the gospel and the underpinnings of soul salvation, only Jesus can grant that understanding. Only Him. Amen. That means you've heard from heaven. Amen. So, when we think about that, we have to understand this sanctification process is ongoing. It's, it's perpetual. It's through this lifetime. Okay? So it says, For by one offering He has perfected every, forever those that are being sanctified. But the Holy Spirit also witnessed to us, for after He had said before, This is the covenant I will make with them after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws into their hearts and in their minds and write them. Then He adds, Their sins... And their lawless deeds, I will remember no more. Where'd you hear that? I wonder where you heard that. About seven minutes ago, right here. Amen. It says in verse 18, Now where there is re remission or forgiveness of these, there's no longer an offering for sin. Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus... Now listen at verse 20. By a new and living way which he consecrated for us through the veil that is his flesh having a high priest over the house of God let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. Hallelujah. He is faithful. Hallelujah. The one who died on Calvary's cross is faithful. And you stand tonight in his righteousness. You stand tonight at peace with God exclusively because of the salvation work of Jesus Christ, period. Amen. No other. He did it by himself. That's why he has ruled out that any man should boast. Amen. You cannot boast in your righteousness. No. You cannot say, I made peace with God. I kept the law. The Bible says none are righteous. Amen. Only Christ. So if, if, you, if you have heard it tonight, this is St. John 14, 27, and it's on page 3 of your handout. Look there with me. It says, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give you, I do not give it to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Peace with God brings full confidence, full assurance. Of the destination of your journey. Yes, yes. The Lord promised trouble in this life. Mm -hmm. Make no mistake about it. He promised to never leave you though. Amen. And he promised to take you to heaven. And he said it in his own word. 
So I will come back and I will take you where I am. Yes, yes. I will take you where I am. And, and so part of our hope is that we're all looking forward to that moment when we depart from this earth and go with the Lord to our new home in heaven Amen. and receive our glorified bodies and rest in heaven forever. I don't know about you, but that sounds really Amen. sweet to me. So in St. John 16, it says, it's on page three of your handout, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world, the words of Jesus Christ. Thanks for letting me share. Amen.